Awesome. We are recording. Hello, Danielle. We Hi. have had a heck of a time getting the right time to do this chat. I don't know if anybody realizes how hard it's been. She is in Hawaii and I'm in Texas and I missed a call and she missed a call. And today we had some issues with my school starting a week late. Last week, her school suddenly got canceled in Hawaii and holy crap, it's been crazy to connect. So Danielle Porter, um, you are an expert in health and well-being and self-care and nutrition. And we are bringing you on today to talk about those things and your tips for military spouses. And without further ado, I will let you introduce yourself. And if anybody's wondering, this is my little two-month-old nugget, and he's going to be joining us for today's chat. <laughs> Yay. Well, I'm thrilled. I'm like, oh, now I get to see a baby. So I am Danielle Porter. I am Aloha in Hawaii. I'm a military spouse for the last 13 years. Uh, my expertise is in nutrition and self-care. I run virtual boot camps and have been a nutrition counselor for the last six years, have my master's degree in public health and nutrition, and have taught nutrition in low-income and Title I schools I taught that for about three years. And so my passion is really whole nutrition or whole rounded nutrition and whole health. So I kind of have coined the term holistic health. So W H O L E, <laughs> I should spell it right. Uh, holistic health in that sense of being a whole person. So it's all about nutrition, fitness, your mental resiliency, which I know is a buzzword for military spouses, but that's truthfully because as military spouses and veterans and in this community, that's what we have to be. We have to be that rubber band that's constantly being able to be snapped back into shape because our life is chaotic and it's hectic. And I feel like 2020 has only <laughs> push that out to the general public as well. Like I feel like as a military spouse, we're really like well-versed in resiliency in that aspect, but now it's like everybody has gotten a taste of what we experienced with this whiplash of, no, we're going here and now we're here and now we're here and you feel like your life is not your own. So it's true learning story. some grounded techniques has really been helpful, I think. Well, and in general, as a military spouse, I feel like we get desensitized to that word resiliency yes, because we're, we are resilient and we have to be in order just to live this life every day. Um, and we just quit listening. I, I mean, I have to be honest, sometimes you just get a little bitter and you quit listening after a while. Like enough is enough. Let me have a break already. Who cares about being resilient? Just let my life be easy like everyone else's. And I think we really, uh, I do. I turn my nose up when I hear about resiliency programs a lot of the time. Oh, for sure. I mean, I remember we were stationed at Fort Campbell right before we were here. And, you know, there's the resiliency programs at ACS and there's all of these different things. And I'm like, listen, this is my whole life. I don't need you to tell me how to be resilient. I don't have another choice. It's either that or flop on the floor and crumble. So yeah, no, that's such a buzzword. And so I hate using it. But at the same time, I don't know that there's a better word for who we are and what we are than that. I don't think so. Um, I really don't. <laughs> but you know, it's, um, it's crazy to think it's always hard being a military spouse. And just with us trying to schedule this dead gum chat together, yeah. thinking about the crazy circumstances that we're living in, how, if we are in need of, I think sometimes we need help. We need a little bit of self care and that's the last thing we give ourselves. What oh, do you, yeah. So I'm like a superwoman. I'm super mom. I hard charge. I do all the things and I am all the things. And what are your tips for people like me who don't necessarily stop to take a break and take care of themselves? Uh, what, how do you convince folks like me to flip over the dark side, so to speak, and be a little bit selfish and do the right thing in terms of taking care of themselves? Right. And I mean, I don't know, I guess I relate so much to that because I mean, and, and I feel like it bears mentioning, I wasn't always this way. There was a really long time of my military spouse life of my own. I mean, just my whole life where it was never the thing I took care of. I was very good at taking care of everybody else. I mean, that's kind of how I was brought up by a single mom. So I'm always you know, got my hands in 50 pots. I'm, you know, dealing with my spouse's deployment and my kids. And, and what I found was I woke up, this was, my daughter was like eight, well, even a little older than that. She's probably like eight months old. 
husband was deploying for the third time. Like, and I was bitter, man. I was so bitter because, you know, the attitude is we'll get through it. And I remember like one day in the kitchen, I was like, no, we don't do anything. I do. And so that's where I was. I got to this, like, and I feel like we all either are that or have known people like that, that you get to, you don't even know what's happening because you're just in reaction and survival mode for so long. You don't really know how else to be. And so the thing you say, how do I convince people? Most of the time I don't have to. Most of the time, by the time they get to me, they're like, listen here, Linda, I need to change. Like something has got to shift. Because I've become somebody I don't want to be. And I've become that woman who, like, I said I would never, ever, like, go near. How do I get back from that? Or how do I, you know, and then I feel like we get all the, like, how do I get back to me? And da 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 And I've just really adopted the mentality of how do I move forward from this? How do I become, because it's not, for me, it's not about going back to who you were. It's about taking all those lessons and pouring into a newer, better version of you, the version that, you know, you really were supposed to be to begin with. Um, so I, I don't know, I feel like I most of the time don't have to convince people to do this. I think inside most, I mean, and if I can speak like mama wise, mm -hmm. mama wise, we know inside, whether it's pertinent and we can deal with it right now or not, we know it needs to be attended to. Uh, and then as far as just, making that a practical part of life. I mean, for me, that's community. I mean, I, I feel like, and that's another one of those buzzwords that so often as a military spouse, you're like, yes, okay, fine, community, I, FRGs and all the acronyms and all the groups and all the things. But those things were created for a purpose and that, that it, we really are made for community. And it's important to get in community with like-minded people who are going through the same things. And that doesn't, for, I guess the whole first half of, of my military spouse life, career, whatever you want to call it, my marriage, um, all of that existed within the military communities, right? So it was FRGs and it was, it was all ACS groups and all of the like coffee groups and the, the spouse state groups and all of the things we went to my husband did green to gold so we were kind of out of the normal traditional military for a little while and i was thrust back into civilian life um and i realized that those communities exist within those spheres too they just aren't shoved down your throat they aren't made like voluntold to do them kind of thing and you know what so, i feel when you talk about community we hear it a lot we get desensitized to it for sure but it's the first thing you see when you look through these Facebook groups, right? Especially with new military spouses and young military spouses. Right. I'm lonely. I need a friend. My husband is deployed and I don't know what to do. And it's such a need in our community. Yet, like if you've been around the block a few times, you just stop hearing it after a while. Oh yeah. But like meeting people and making new friends and having people that you feel like can be a support system that is one of the hardest parts of the military life being so transient. Um, yeah, it's one of the, you know, one of the hardest things, but yet it's one of the easiest things to dismiss as a need. Oh, well, and for me, <laughs> I don't know like, if it's comfortable to admit this, but like I got to a point, especially like in that bitter low time, I'm like, I don't want new friends. I don't want to meet new people. <laughs> I don't need any of this. I got very lone wolf. Like you're talking about being super mom and super woman that can like, I, that's where I was. I was like hardcore. I don't need you. I don't need anybody. I'm going to hunker down. We're going to take care of this on the home front. And I don't need that. And I think because of the desensitization from being a military spouse and being like eyebrow deep in spouse groups, um, I didn't, I didn't want that. But what I found outside of the military communities is that there are other community groups that aren't necessarily about being a military spouse. And that's kind of one of the things that I would encourage people to do is find things that are like life adjacent to where you are that maybe aren't just groups from your husband's work or whatever your spouse's work that they they are things that you're interested in or things that maybe you want to be interested in take a class if you can get in a a big thing for me was the mops group so mothers of preschoolers getting involved in that getting involved in a bible study at school 
joining a boot camp like one of the ones I run where you're in community with people who have similar goals as you, who are going to encourage you to do things that fill you up on a you level so that you can be better in the whole world, not just in this one little segment. It's funny, I was reviewing a journal of mine from 2018 really recently, and it was talking about my desire to have a close, like to have close vulnerable relationships, authentic relationships with people. Sorry, he's a little fussy. Um, and it's talking about how I wanna be growth minded together with my peers, right? Yes. And yet you lose sight, like that's the first thing you lose sight of whenever you are busy working, momming, doing all the things. And it's like the, the most important thing you could do for yourself, yet we get so wrapped up in our lives that we forget to go and be a part of those communities and that it takes a little effort and a little bit of being uncomfortable and kind of exposing yourself to meet those people. Well, and I think you mentioned something that makes so much sense in all arenas, not just community. It's most of the time, it's the things you need the most that are the first to go. When crap hits the fan, whether that's 2020 or 2018 or whenever it was, when crap hits the fan and your whole life shifts, and I feel like military community is really well versed in that, the first thing to go is like, for lack of better words, self-care. The first thing to go are meeting with your friends. The first thing to go is drinking water. The first thing to go is healthy food. And we revert to these patterns or these like, I guess patterns is the best way to put it, of things that don't serve us. And we think that we're doing something good because we've taken something off our plate. Well, I, I'll just skip going to the gym. Oh, I, I'll just grab something quick to eat. And it's those things I've been writing a lot lately about what I would call like linchpin things. They're the things that don't seem to make any difference in the here and now. But once you remove that linchpin, the whole building starts crumbling, right? Like I'm big into word pictures and analogies and that. And again, like you take that maybe cornerstone or linchpin out and it doesn't seem like it, like, okay, well, I skipped girls night or I skipped lunch that's a big one for my community oh, i skipped lunch my kids were doing virtual school and we're doing this and that and the other so i just i skipped lunch i'll make it up at dinner and what you don't realize is doing that or skipping or taking that one thing off your plate is really what has led to the crumbling of the rest of the day and then it's just that cycle that starts all over and all over and so the things you know, I feel like my job as a coach and my, my job in, in my field is to help, number one, remind you <laughs> that those things are the things that are holding the ship together, right? But those things are also things, like, it's not a shame thing. It's very normal. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's not about adding all the things back in. It, <laughs> you're fine. Um, it, it's, it's about doing what you can where you are to get to the next step. You know, just do the next healthy thing. Do the next right thing. It's, you know, honorable. Well, and it's so easy. You're talking about linchpin and cornerstone things. And you're right. Like, I am a lunch skipper, right? I, I habitually skip lunch when I'm in the flow, right? In the zone at work. I'm sorry. He's like, it's, it's the worst timing. <laughs> don't apologize. It's totally fine. <laughs> but he... Uh, we're like a perpetual lunch skipper, but then it makes me fall into worse habits. I'm going to just do this and stand up. So. But um, like, it, like later in the day, it makes me regress to bad habits. Like if I'm hungry and then I skipped lunch, I might really want a glass of wine or something like that to, oh, yeah. like, cause you want sugar or, you know, whatever it, you want that relaxation feeling. Um, but then instead of doing the thing like where I would have eaten lunch and then curb the maybe desire to get some wine or whatever it may be later, I just skipped lunch, thought I was doing the best work I could for work and then look back at it later like, oh, I was hungry and I was not on my peak. So I have to redo half of this anyway. Right. Like doubling down on the work because I wanted to skip lunch. Um, and I was like, you get that like low blood sugar kind of head high feeling whenever you haven't eaten. Oh and yeah. Do anything well. So that's like one of my bad habits that leads into more bad habits. Um, and well, I think if you perpetually keep skipping that linchpin thing over time, that's really bad. You know, gaining right. weight or becoming an alcoholic or whatever it may be. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I, I think it, 
a lot of times it comes down to number one, taking the time to self-reflect of who you want to be. I mean, I think that that's a, a, a piece that people like, I don't know, brush off as new agey or they think, well, it's so nice. She has time to think about who she wants to be. But when you segment things into like, what kind of mom do you want to be? What kind of employee do you want to be? What kind of business owner do you want to be? Whatever that realm is and understanding that that's not, you're not going to get to wherever that is by a doing the things that you're doing right now. Like that just isn't the way things are. And then B it's like, what little things, what little tweaks can I start making now that will get me there? I don't have to be there tomorrow, but just having an awareness, like bringing awareness in and knowing that, you know, I think <laughs> as you're like, patting and rocking the baby it's really easy to I don't know feel like it seasonally like I think it's really important that you acknowledge what season you're in too like and that some things can be off your plate in certain seasons and that you don't have to you know do all the things and be all the people while you need to be attending to what's a priority but what I find so often is that not it's not that the priorities have shifted it's that mama or jamie or danielle they're not a priority at all anymore like they're gone they're not on the list they are i'll get around to it when i get around to it and that's not again you're gonna find yourself six seven eight years later like who am i how did i get this way how did i gain 50 pounds how did i you know hate my husband how did i you know when did i become this jerk of a mom that you know, or whatever the life space is, mm -hmm. you know? Well, and it's, I think acknowledging seasons is so important. Like I'm in a season, I am reluctantly in a season. Like we want yeah. to have children, but we didn't want to have COVID-19 and we didn't want to move internationally. And we had all these really stressful life events happen all at once. Mm -hmm. And I just think <laughs> what I took about, he's two months old. I took like a month off of work. When I say I took a month off, I was still answering my emails and stuff like that. I was not fully disengaged, but looking at that, I probably needed to be. And then another thing is, you know, I really underestimated how spoiled I was before kid number two. I had full time childcare. Um, and now we're in such a pickle. We have school that started three days ago in person. Let's not even talk about virtual learning for two weeks. Um, and then I have a part-time nanny that works some of the days of the week from 10 to three. And that facilitates me being able to do some of the like bare essentials for work. Um, but like, as you see right now, I used to in another life in Germany before we moved, I would have a, you know, full-time childcare and no kids trying to do these chats and phone conversations with people. Thank God. Um, people are full of grace right now for these remote, you know, no kid, no childcare working from home with crazy stuff happening in the background situations. People have a lot more grace for that because they've seen it themselves in their own lives. Right. Um, so I'm just grateful for my lucky stars for that grace from people. But you know, it's, um, I, I am reluctantly in a season I don't want to be in, in my life. I wanted to have another child, but I wanted it to be like it was like six months ago before all this yeah. happened and we had childcare. Cause I well, am, really am a better mom when I am working and feel productive, like I'm contributing. Right. Uh, I, I'm much more present with my kids, you know, when I feel like I am doing my purpose. Right. Right. Um, but I also like, in this world I'm in, I'm like halfway in one world and halfway in the other world where, you know, I feel like I'm halfway doing work because I've got children that need my care. And like, I'm halfway being a parent because I've got work that needs my attention, but I'm not doing the best in either thing. So it's really not, I am reluctantly in a season I don't want to be. <laughs> well, I mean, but how, I don't know how pertinent is that to everyone? I feel like so many people in so many realms are in a season of their life they don't want to be in and they did not choose this. Like, it's not like, oh, these decisions that I made led me to COVID-19 life. Like nobody wanted to be there. And so the, the important thing is, is to kind of lay it out and to see it for what it is, to see, you know, again, my big, one of my big things is control what you're able to control mm -hmm. and let the rest go. And, and like you said, I think people are so, grace filled right now in so many ways because they're experiencing we're all in the same boat 
you know, like it, it, even if it's not a kid, I was on a call earlier and you know, the woman didn't have any children, but she's got cats. And so the cats are like walking in front of the screen and I'm like, Oh, it doesn't even matter. Like you, be, you build this like flexibility of, of grace and all of that. And I think that that, um, sorry. Um, Um, and yeah. so it, it's really, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I said the and wrong word. I have word. a crying infant. <laughs> well, and I mean, but, but you just move forward, right? Like you can let all of that derail you. And, and again, like to kind of pull it back into focus, I think that there are some specific things to take charge of. And there are some things that you truly can control if you choose to control them, right? Like one of the things I talk to my people about is, is water. Like I know water, 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 but it, it literally is just as easy to grab water as it is a soda, or it's just as easy to grab water as it is another cup of coffee, but you've conditioned yourself to do these certain things and it's just repatterning those. And so that's where you know, or even the things, what, what kind of blows my mind is, uh, it's kind of comes from one of my clients that I had a conversation with a couple of weeks ago. And she was talking about how she drove to, I think it was like Whole Foods or Publix or something like that and picked up dinner. And so I was like, oh, okay, well, you didn't have time to grocery shop. And she's like, no, I just, I, I didn't want to make anything. I'm like, so you have the groceries at home, you have the meal plan, but you've convinced yourself that you need to get in the car, drive five miles, get out of the car, get your mask on, because that's how we live now, right? Like, do all the things, go in, buy prepackaged like salad bar food, get back in the car, come back home, da 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 da. Like, instead of just finding like, hopefully I've equipped my clients with like some pretty staple things. And she's like, man, yeah. Like how much more effort did that take me to get to something that was convenient instead of like just dealing with the mental, like that one little hump of getting over, you know, grabbing the three things and mixing them in a bowl at home. Yeah. So, so really looking at it for what it is. Yeah. I'm a repatterning is a really wonderful way to put it. Um, because it is, I was reading, gosh, because I can't remember things. Um, I was reading a book, something about the power of habit, maybe was the title. And I can't remember the author's name. And it was literally talking about how your brain creates these shortcuts for everything. And right. even if it's not a beneficial shortcut, if you've in some way perceived it to be a shortcut, and it was talking about this woman who was an addictive gambler who had like thrown away hundreds of thousands of dollars gambling and all this crazy stuff. That was not good for her, but she had convinced herself that she needed to gamble as a relief and that she felt confident because she was good at gambling. Right. right. And it was all these horrible, horrible things. It was destroying her, her family, their financial situation. She was going into debt. I mean, it was criminal and it's because of the way her brain created these shortcuts to pleasure Right. That, you know, it, that's why she was doing it. And um, to me, it's an amazing thing what our brains can do to control us to go and get those pleasure hormones or whatever it is that they do in the brain. So oh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. There's several books that I've read that really, I mean, I don't know that I'm smart enough to go in to like neurology and stuff like that. But our brains are really fascinating. Right now, one of the things that I'm pursuing is a certification in NLP techniques, so neuro-linguistic programming, um, to kind of aid in my clients' weight loss journeys or their health journeys or whatever, because so much of it is this subconscious pre-programming. And, and really, like, broken down, all a habit is, is a trigger, a response, and a reward, right? So, like, I think it's so funny. And this is why my specialty is in nutrition counseling and not like nutritionist or dietitian, because so often what you're doing in nutrition work and dietitian work is kind of fixing things without fixing the root, right? So like, I'm going to give you this meal plan and you're going to eat it, but we're not going to attend to why you don't want to. We're not going to attend to, you know, all of the, 
the reprogramming that has to happen. And so I'm trying to like, you know, get some, get some tools and techniques in my arsenal to help people with that. But so often, like I was saying with habits, it's a trigger, a response and a reward, right? So like the trigger is had a really bad day at work. I come home, I grab the bottle of wine. That's my response. The reward is, you know, the pleasure hormones, the chillness, the whatever, right? And so then we start feeling shame. Well, I probably shouldn't have that third glass. <laughs> so now that's my new trigger. My new response is I've got to numb that feeling away. So we have more wine, <laughs> the reward. And then, and then there's that like ancillary response down in there. And so often you know, and I feel like it's interesting because alcohol gets thrown in there a lot or cigarettes or, you know, illegal things, but food is the most legal abused thing out there. But you have to eat, right? Like there's like, we have to eat to live. There's not really another way to, <laughs> to fuel our bodies. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, it's a very socially acceptable way of dealing with things, but it, it really ends up throwing you off in all other areas of your life. Cause like you were saying, you skip lunch, you're grouchy, you're not doing your best work. You know, it leads to all of these other things where if we just attended to that trigger and, and reprogramming with a new response. So, and that takes time and most people don't want to deal with taking the time to, to change the habit for sure. Yeah. And it's, I suspect just based on my own life, that things that are a bad habit are super duper amplified right now behind closed doors when we're not going out and doing anything. There's oh, yeah. a form of accountability when you know, I have to get up and show up and be somewhere the next day. Um, because, you know, we like to please other people inherently a little, you know, I say I'm not a people pleaser, but you know, I don't wear the same outfit two days in a row because I'm afraid of that judgment. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, for sure. Right now, I'm sure that everything is mega amplified with, with the stay home and the stuff that goes on behind closed doors is definitely like, that's not the Instagram world that we live in. Uh, it's the ugly world we live in and it's the real one that causes those long-term ramifications that we don't want to have to uh, right. take. Right. And so my, again, I don't know like healing work and stuff like that and dealing with reprogramming and habit and response and it's not sexy. Like it's not fun. <laughs> it's not, you know what I mean? Like that's not the fun Instagrammable things. Yeah. You know, it's fun to Instagram our beautiful, colorful salad, but when it's followed by shame and guilt and all of the other things that, you know, happened after that salad, like you're talking about with like this pretty little Instagram world, look at that sweet baby. Um, <laughs> You know, that's the stuff that it, it has to come off of that, the page, or it has to come off of the screen and really inhabit your life. Um, because all of what's visible right here, it goes away. So you have to be able to deal with your real life in real time, you know, and, and build in those, those sustainable practices that really do set you up for a, a more, I mean, in, in, in the easiest sense of the word, like a more productive way of being, you know? Well, and you know, what's funny is I'm reading this book to my kid. It's our first chapter book. Yeah. Um, it's called way of the warrior kid and it's by Jocko Willink. Ooh, I'll write that down. Okay. So Jocko, he's such a dude, bro. And I want to hate him. I really do because yeah. he's a dude, bro. Right. Yeah. Well, my husband in Germany, we went on this drive and he puts on like a three hour Jocko podcast. Oh, I know who this is. Yeah. I know who it is. My husband met him in the PX. <laughs> I'm like, I know. The coolest thing. Well, I, mean, I want to hate Jocko because he is just like a meathead. He mm -hmm. talks about, you know, lifting weights and geese. Like he has a ghee making company and I'm like, Ugh, I don't want to like this guy, but I do. I really like him. He's super deep. And the podcast my husband made me listen to in the car ride on Germany was him, was Jocko reading Churchill. And um, it was so in-depth. It was so insightful. And I loved every minute of it. I was madly taking notes in the car. And so I reluctantly like him 
And so my husband goes out and he buys, Jocko has a, several kid books. And I'm reading this one to my four-year-old and it's way above his head, way of the warrior kid. So I'm like reading the page and then condensing it to a four-year-old language. Sure. It's about discipline and it's about like skipping those bad habits and waking up early in the morning and forcing yourself to exercise. And if you're tired, go to bed earlier, but never don't wake up early in the morning to work out. Like all these fundamental discipline principles. Shut up, and, Jocko. Um, I don't even like you. I know. <laughs> and I'm like, D let's be for real, Jocko. Uh, I'm learning a heck of a lot more from this book than my kid is, but we'll right. reread it in a few years when he's like been bullied or something at school and he might resonate with it a little bit more. But it's really a not sexy way of being is to have the discipline to like wake up early in the morning and to exercise and to eat healthy and to skip out on the bad habits that we have like Netflix and chill and all those other things that we do that are not serving our higher good. And so it is really not Instagrammable. Um, but then the funny story, and I have posted this like today or something online, my son points, like the only thing he's contributing to this book reading, cause he's sleepy in the bed. He points at the word TV and he goes, Netflix, Netflix. And I'm like, Netflix? What are you talking about Netflix for? And he points at the word TV in the book and he said, those two little words spell Netflix. And I'm like, oh, Jesus, I let this kid watch too much TV. And the book is telling the story about how the kid watches too much TV right there. And I was like, <laughs> what well, I'm doing right now as we're speaking together, he's downstairs watching TV. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I feel like there's grace for all the things too. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm a mom. I've got two kids. I have a full-time job from home, like husband in the military. Like we get it, you know? <laughs> and I think there is some like, I just feel like there's grace for all the things. You know better, you do better, whatever. But there's also times in which devices I say devices and I don't mean electronic devices. I mean, that falls in that category, but devices are important. Like we get things done because we're able to Netflix. <laughs> with the kids. Um, but, it, but it's also one of those things where you, you're going to build habits into them too. Right. So like talking about things like that, like Netflix is for this specific thing. It's not for, hours of leisurely like numbing out to the rest of the world kind of thing yeah. uh, so i don't know to me there's there's a a reality part of growth like the day-to-day -day part of growth and change and self-care and all of that and then there's the like ideal version right mm -hmm. and so yes the ideal version is there for a reason but it, there's a big gap in that too. There's a big gap where we all live in there. And I think the same thing for nutrition, the same thing for all kinds of things, relationships, like there's the ideal and there's the reality. And then there's this huge gap in between. And so the point is progress, right? Like the point is not perfection. The point is to just continually being on that journey of progress. And so I hope that that's what I've instilled in my clients is that as their coach, as their confidant in that, I don't ever expect perfection from them. I had to learn how to not expect perfection from myself. And as someone who is highly motivated by the ideal version of what this should look like, there, there was a lot of growth in that. And so coming to this new realization that progress, and, and I think what I was scared of, I mean, and to kind of get vulnerable and fear-based here, I think the fear for most people is it's either ideal or it's nothing. That there's nothing in between. We can't have this beautiful life in between. It's either I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. and read my Bible and exercise and eat salads and smoothies and like crush it every day at work. And my kid's going to be this math genius who plays with abacuses instead of <laughs> net Netflix. Like it's that or it's hell in a handbasket mm -hmm. or it's complete chaos. Eat your Cheerios off the floor while mommy drinks wine in the corner and cries. Like, <laughs> and that's not reality either, but that's that fear. That <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's that fear that like makes, a, makes perfection so alluring or makes ideals so alluring. And so the, the, the good is in that, is in that journey in the middle on that bridge. Yeah. And you just summed up virtual school in two weeks, uh, except for it was goldfish on the floor. And I think it was beer last week. Like, instead of Right. Like, I mean, again, like, before, like virtual school. Or maybe school. he was eating goldfish out of a pint glass and I was slopping beer up off the floor. I'm not sure, but something I heard he was going <laughs> I blacked out that whole last part. <laughs> We got to get to a better here. <laughs> virtual school was not my jam and I never want to do it again. But anyways, so Daniel, I love talking to you. I think we could chat all day, but I want to get to your top tips for okay. military spouses, military members, whoever it may be, when yeah. it comes to nutrition and self-care, let her rip. What are your top tips for people? Well, I mean, first off, I know it stinks. The nutrition guru is going to tell you, drink your water. But that <laughs> is like, truthfully the, like, the starting point for everyone, because we live in America, we have clean drinking water. So we're going to start there. So really my top tip is start the day with water. Let that be the first thing that's going to rehydrate your mind. I mean, so much dehydration is lost at night. And so that's going to rehydrate your mind. It's going to set off that chain of events that's going to lead to a healthier life overall. You know, to Tip two, put veggies in wherever you can. I mean, as, as a society, we are so, we're such in a deficit, right? Like, I mean, I'll never forget, like, quick little side story. I went home. I did not grow up in a healthy, like, smoothie, salad-loving family, right? Like, you don't get to be an obese teenager in a smoothie, kale-loving family. And so I remember going home, and I was like, Mom, where this is post-lifestyle change. And I'm like, where are the vegetables here? And she was like, honey, I put onions in this, in this pot pie. And I'm like, <laughs> onions? <laughs> okay. So like, let, let's look at reality here, friends. <laughs> like, good on putting the onions in, but we're going to need more. So I say sneak, but, but make those things accessible. Make those things what you have on hand because you will never get there if you don't keep them on hand so make them on hand always just grab a you know if, if you already know like this is kind of a, a lame veggie meal grab a handful of baby carrots and throw them on the side like just amp up those veggies because again you're pouring vital nutrients back into your body so that's kind of tip number two tip number three not a single client I've ever had. Like I get eye rolls. I get, I don't even like you. It's like we're, we're back in Jocko land here. If you, and I'm, I guess I'm mostly primarily speaking to spouses and moms and stuff like that here. If you are the person who makes the meal plan, buys the food, goes grocery shopping and prepares it, you're the one in control who has to take ownership of what's happening in your house. So to say, well, I had donuts and this and that and this and that. Well, who bought the donuts? Who, who chose? Like, take ownership for that and, and stop placing blame on your kids and your husband and all of the things. Like, you have to take ownership for your role in this. And that's hard and nobody likes to do it. And nobody likes to admit that, yeah, I'm the one that buys chicken nuggets all the time. And so, yeah, like, my three-year-old's not buying chicken nuggets, okay? Like, that that's me. So he eats what I buy. So making those better choices. And then I guess, I don't know how many tips I could go on all day with tips, but um, just make the next healthy choice. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no starting Monday. There's no like, Oh, we're going to new year's day ringing in. Like, no, quit that crap. Make the next healthy choice. So what if last night you downed a bottle of wine and you ate a pint of ice cream, like literally, make the next best choice, make the next healthy choice. Like, don't wait, don't put it off. You know, your girlfriends and you went out and had Chick-fil-A for lunch. Oh, now all today is just ruined. No, like cut, the, like all that does is set you back. Just make the next healthy choice. Um, and then move your body, like it, wherever you are, however you can. I mean, I, I work with such a wide variety of clients from people who a 15 minute walk is, is hardcore. And then I work with, you know, people who are lifting super heavy bodybuilder kind of weights. Just move your body. 
30 minutes a day. I don't care what you do, walk, exercise video, gym time, go for a run, whatever, but move your body. Your body needs that, needs that. All of the chemicals in your, in your body desperately need that. That's and awesome. get a community. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I appreciate you, Danielle. And um, I was going to mention about baby carrots. Like if I take away goldfish and pretzels and all the th little snacks that my son likes and I put, especially those little tomatoes. Oh yeah. Little tomatoes, baby carrots, like apples, oranges. I just put that stuff really low in the refrigerator. Somehow it just gets eaten. And it's because my son is just hungry and he grabs what's convenient. And if an apple is convenient that time, instead of a bag of goldfish or a granola bar or whatever processed food, then he'll eat that. And I'm so, you know, with kids, it's amazing the nature versus nurture thing. Some kids are really picky, some kids aren't, whatever. But just the availability, like you said, of having that for him makes a big difference. And then for me with veggies, personally, oh, here, sorry, bud, not paying attention. Um, for me personally, like if it's already, like maybe it's worth spending the extra money on something that's chopped up already because if right. the barrier for me is I'm not going to eat that broccoli because I have to chop that whole thing up. Right. I just buy the ones that's already chopped up and then I eat broccoli. You know, I like it, but if the barrier is I don't want to chop it up because I don't have time for that, even though I do, then that's what I do. Right. Well, and I mean, I feel like that's a whole nother episode of the <laughs> of topics of conversation, but there's going to be sacrifice. Like if you desire a healthy lifestyle, there's going to be sacrifices. And typically the sacrifice is either time or money, right? And so you got to pick which one is more important to you in that season of your life. And as, as a newborn mama, as you know, virtual school and all of this, sometimes the sacrifice, I got to sacrifice the money for convenience. And that convenience takes the form of, pre-cut up broccoli. Sometimes yep. for me, like I remember one of the m biggest blessings that was ever given to me was, you know, had a, a baby and a toddler, a growing nutrition practice. I was in grad school and my husband had just deployed and a friend of mine gifted me, like I just cried and cried and cried to her like, thank you, this is such a great gift. But she gifted me a meal service for one week out of the month. So for one week, I had like, I don't know, whatever, HelloFresh Blue Apron, like whatever that thing was delivered to my front door. And it was the biggest blessing for us. Like, yes, is it is it way not cost effective? Absolutely. But did it get a healthy meal on my table in a time, in a integral part of my time in my life that was really difficult? Yeah, it really did. And so maybe paying the extra money for instant cart to deliver your groceries or for you to do click, click and pick up or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like that's the kind of thing that you just have to make those determinations of, is this worth a time sacrifice or is this worth a money sacrifice for me? It's a uh, same thing. Like best gift ever was a, uh, I think my husband deployed and I got like Mary maids or something of that nature. Oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. Just, you, it's you, gift ever. Yeah. So those types of things, like hello, military spouse, gift alert. Um, those types of things really make a big difference. You they know. do. Yeah, they really do. And I think just just acknowledging the season of life where you're in, and and don't be afraid to get help. Gosh, that's the biggest thing. I I had someone reach out to me. I had made a post on social media about humility and being finally there was a point in time where I feel like God like struck me with lightning like friend you will get help or I will make you get help kind of thing <laughs> um being humble enough to ask for help reach out to a coach reach out to a friend reach out to a professional in an area if you're struggling in mental health like I know that the lie comes in that I don't need help I'm strong enough for this I shouldn't need help we're, I mean, we're human beings and, and we're, we're created to be in community and in fellowship with one another. And so reach out to get help. It's, I mean, it's, it's not just okay. It's necessary. Yep. Some good, some good stuff. I really do think we could talk about this for a whole nother hour. I know. But <laughs> I know. Well, um, to, um, value our audience's time, we will kind of stop right here.
Danielle, do you have any upcoming events or things that you would like to promote for your own business? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for the opportunity, number one, to speak on your platform. I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, and then as far as like what I have going on, so every single month I host a virtual boot camp. It starts the first Monday of the month. Um, exercise, nutrition, mindset, lifestyle tips, that kind of thing. Daily accountability. You do get a meal plan because I know that that's an obstacle for a lot of people that just takes too much effort. So I try to provide that for my clients. Um, really hands-on care of you. So that's the new ones start the first Monday of the month. Secondly, I do have a podcast. It's called A Whole and Nourished Life. You can find that on Spotify or on Apple Podcast, any of the podcast platforms it's out there. And lastly, like a plug for something that I'm really working diligently on. It's really it, I'm in, in the editing process, but I've written a book called A Whole and Nourished Life. And so I'm looking to have that published come the end of this year, beginning of next year. That should be out. Yeah. Well, we'll have you back on home. before your book comes out and you can do a little mini launch and talk about it. That'll be awesome. Oh, I would love that so much. It's been a passion project of mine and something that I thought I would never like I don't know. I just never, I was like, no, I won't write a book. That's silly. Like and <laughs> it, it just kind of all flowed out and then it's just kind of pushed itself along the process. So I'm really, really excited to have that launch. Well, congratulations on the book. I am anxiously waiting to buy it and then meet you one day and make you sign it. So that's going to happen. <laughs> I'll send um, you a sign. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate your time today, Danielle. Thank you so much. And everyone else, we will see you again next week. Thank you. Oh, wait, hold on. I got to learn how to sleep.